thanks to everyone for coming. This is a joint event between the Atheist Society and uh, Labour Youth Society. Um, as you all know, uh, Senator Abacic also spoke yesterday at a Law Society meeting on uh, this similar issue. So hopefully not too many of you are there, since you won't be overlapping too much. But uh, hopefully we can make this a bit more interactive. And uh, if you have any questions uh, after she de delivers her talk, you can ask, ask them there. And uh, hopefully she'll be able to answer them to your satisfaction. So I'll just uh, I'll let her, I'll let Ivana take it away. She's going to be talking about the the, the Irish Constitution, primarily the blasphemy laws, I presume the, the education system, and the need for secular reform as uh, she sees it. So uh, please welcome Ivana. Um. Um, thanks very much, Adam, and thanks to atheist the atheist society and to Labour Youth here, and congratulations to Keith, who's now your incoming UCC president. And uh, I was helping him celebrate a little last night. So, um, delighted to be here and to speak about, I was going to focus in fact on the blasphemy law, but I don't want to speak for very long because as Adam has said, I'd much prefer this to be an interactive um, discussion group, discussion um, event, because I sort of did the lecture last night. So, I'm going to focus on the blasphemy law, just talk a little bit about the change that came in last summer, and then if you want, we can, t we can you know, depending on what people want, we can talk about education, we can talk about God and the Constitution, which was the main focus last night, we can talk about any other issues. And uh, also thanks to Barry, who organised last night's Law Sock event. And the other uh, point to make is, of course, congratulations to the AP Society for, for winning Best New Society. Best News and yeah. Best Website. Well. And Best Website. That's, 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 that's very impressive. Um, so, Not going to um, let that one slide. <laughs> no, well done. In fact, it's, it, it's useful to kind of start with that point, because all around Ireland, there's a, there's a real growing movement of people who are challenging the religious uh, status quo and the, the, sort of the establishment view of religion and, and state as being, inter as being inextricably intertwined. I mean, I was, I've been stunned, in fact, really in the last 12, less, less than 12 months, since last summer, at the extent to which this issue has taken off. And Dermot O'Hearn's introduction, the Minister for Justice's introduction last summer of the new blasphemy, de new definition of blasphemy, uh, um, was a real catalyst. Um, shortly after, I'll talk in a minute about what the definition is and what the law on blasphemy is, but uh, um, after the law was, was brought in. There was a great deal of um, campaign, a, a, sort of a great deal of, of internet campaigning against it. But Atheist Ireland, a new group, then was set up to try and campaign against it. They had a meeting in um, Wynn's Hotel in Central Dublin last summer, uh, Saturday afternoon in July. They asked me to come in and open the event. Uh, I don't know if any of you here were at it. I thought Jenny, Jesus was going to. Um, uh, uh, um, Saturday afternoon in July, Wynn's Hotel. You know, and it's a big function room. They're never going to fill it. Went in and there was really not even room to, there was, all the seats were taken, people standing up at the back, huge amount of passion about this issue and uh, Atheist Ireland has just been growing and growing they've also yeah. got oh, <laughs> uh, anyway so there's a big it generated, it generated a big amount, a great deal of passion uh, the Count Me Out web, countmeout.org website was also set up just since last year and it's a website for people who want, who were baptised and com often communioned and confirmed Catholic as indeed I was and who want to excommunicate themselves or leave the Catholic Church and uh, so there's now a website where you can download the documents required to do that and um, if you send them into uh, your local Catholic I think it goes to the bishop you'll get a letter back there's a standard letter that comes back to you from the bishop saying um, we respect your view we would very much like to meet with you to discuss why you wish to leave the Catholic Church it's an interesting exercise to undertake so just to move then to the look at the blasphemy law um, uh, last summer, uh, the defamation bill was completing a long, its long progression through the House of the Oireachtas. This was a bill, this is now an act, which uh, reforms the law on defamation, makes some very important and long overdue changes to libel laws, um, makes, uh, you know, for all sorts of reasons, improves the law on libel. But uh, at a, in a last minute move, Dermot Hearn introduced a new section into the bill, which Im immediately overshadowed all of the very important reform of libel law contained in the other many other sections of the bill. In section 36, he created a new definition of blasphemy, and he, and he said that this was required because it was a matter of urgency. Now, the history of it was that he, uh, uh, that the Constitution refers specifically to the offence of blasphemy. It's the only criminal offence which is, which has a constitutional um, uh, de 
given, which, which, is, which is presence in the Constitution. Article 46.1 of the Constitution says, the publication or utterance of blasphemous, seditious or indecent matter is an offence which shall be punishable in accordance with law. And that was inserted in 1937 when the Constitution was being drafted. It refers to the old common law offence of blasphemy, for anyone who's a law student, meaning an offence that's a, a sort of judge made. It wasn't defined in any legislation, it was simply there in the Constitution and had been previously referred, um, prosecuted in various different cases in England and, uh, and uh, in, in England. Um, when we were subject to British law. Um, and essentially the or origin of the offence was the idea of offending against somebody's religion. In its earliest form, it actually was denying the existence of God. It then became, uh, it then took on a more general uh, definition in the, in the case law of, um, of offending somebody else's religion. But interestingly, if you look at the history of prosecutions in the, in the, um, and go back centuries, you'll find that they tended to be interclerical. In other words, between um, uh, during the, the time of the Reformation, where, where Protestant preachers were challenging Catholic um, beliefs, um, then you found... I'm asking myself, is God on our side? I don't know myself. You know. <laughs> the answer is she isn't, of course. In, uh, <laughs> but anyway, the, uh, the, um, the definition was, 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 I suppose, changed through the case law, but it generally tended to be used against, against preachers of other religions who had um, uh, criticised or, um, or challenged some aspect of the, of the majority religion. And that's the history of the blasphemy, of blasphemy law, but it was very rarely prosecuted in practice. I think the last prosecution was 19th century. Um, when, the cost, when the Constitution was... And it, so the offence had really fallen into disuse by the time the Constitution was drafted, yet de Valera kept it in the Constitution. And it's one of the examples I always give in terms of the influence of religion, and in particular of Catholic doctrine in our Constitution. We see quite a range of different examples of this, and the existence of a, of a reference to blasphemy offence is one of them. Um, but despite the provision of the Constitution, no prosecutions were taken for blasphemy until the 1990s. And during the 1995 divorce referendum, an individual called Corway sought to introduce, uh, John Corway, um, sought to take a prosecution, a private prosecution, against independent newspapers. I don't know, some of you may remember, but it was, there was a cartoon published in the Sunday Independent newspaper during the divorce referendum. At the time, the anti-divorce campaigners had big billboards up saying, hello divorce, bye bye daddy, to try and scare people against voting in divorce. And of course, the divorce referendum was passed by a very small majority in 95. This was the second divorce referendum. But hello divorce, bye bye daddy, was seen as in a very effective scaremongering poster. The satirical cartoon published in the Sunday Independent, with, at which John Corey took offence, was a cartoon showing three pro-divorce politicians, uh, Princess de Rossa, um, I think it was Rory Quinn, and, and who was the third? Was John Bruton. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, three, the three politicians um, waving goodbye to a Catholic priest who was trying to offer them communion, and the caption was, hello progress, bye bye father. And John Corway argued, <laughs> John Corway argued that this was a, um, th this was a gross insult to the holy sacrament of uh, the sacrament, sacrament of holy communion. As a practicing Catholic, he f he took offence at this, and he sought to prosecute independent newspapers. But um, but the, you know given the, the, the way our criminal law is structured, the state would have had to take over the prosecution. So it became then a challenge to the state's failure to prosecute the independent newspaper group for this cartoon. And it, ultimately the matter went to the Supreme Court, which ruled that without any legislative definition of the constitutional offence of blasphemy, and they agreed there was a constitutional offence of blasphemy, but they said you need a legislative definition of this because otherwise it lacks clarity. And you cannot, in, in accordance with our rules on due process in Article 38 of the Constitution, you cannot prosecute somebody for an offence that's so vague that the parameters are not known. And therefore, in 1999, which was when the case finally reached the Supreme Court, July 1999, the Supreme Court ruled the offence the offence cannot be prosecuted. And it then just, nothing happened. There was no public up outcry. John Corey was disappointed, but there was no uproar about it. Divorce had been passed and was in place some years by then. And uh, there was no sense of urgency until 10 years later, you know, to the month, last July, Dermot O'Hearn announced that it was now a matter of urgency to create a new statutory definition of blasphemy. And that's what he proceeded to do in the uh, Section 36 of the Defamation Act. And that now provides that a person publishes or utters blasphemous matter 
if they publish or utter matter that is grossly abusive or insulting in relation to matters held sacred by any religion, thereby causing outrage among a substantial number of the adherents of that religion. So that's the actus reus, the criminal law terms, the physical act of the offence <coughs> means that you publish or utter matter that co- is abusive, grossly abusive or insulting to matters held sacred by any religion. The, clearly the Corway cartoon would fall into that category, that thereby causes outrage among a substantial number of the adherents of that religion, so you'd have to show there was a substantial number who were outraged, but again that wouldn't be hard if you had, for example, a Danish, you know, the Danish cartoon